What does an outline look like? Well, for me, on these assignments that I do, they're usually 10 or 12 pages, and it's the entire story treatment, and it's not just line by line. I mean, there are some outlines that just, it's a line and a line, but uh, for these movies, for television, they're eight acts, so everything has to be broken down. Then when I started, I just was like, you know, I, I literally just, I was like, oh, okay, and I knew something, something about page 30 and page 60 or whatever, and I sort of tried to follow that, but, and I didn't find it difficult to remember that something was supposed to happen or something like that, but I was very much on my own and I wrote whatever. I, I write it as a story, so if you were to sit down and read it, you'd be reading the story of, of the movie, which I think is essential to create, because I find that many, uh, in fact, I've had friends that do this, so I'm just gonna sit down and I have the vague idea and I'm just gonna write, and I'm like, you'll, you'll be lost in the barren wasteland of Act Two. With no water, you'll be in the desert, you'll be lost, and you'll wonder how you're gonna trudge through those 75 pages or whatever. You know, it's very important for people to remember, you don't have to learn the rules to break them. You can just ignore them. If you feel like you're being expressive and something's cool, that you're writing something's cool, and then you start showing it to other people and other people think it's cool, then that's the only thing we care about. Because we would not have any, we would not have any Fellini, we would not have Orson Welles, we probably would not have Curacao. You know, eventually people have to stop listening to what people are suggesting. And nowadays, you know, people being told they can't direct young women, people of color, diverse, you know, voices that are like have been discouraged or whatever. And all those people I just like be like, get out of my face. I'm gonna, I wanna say what I wanna say. And that's the only way we move forward you know, with this art form is when people just say, I don't care what I'm supposed to be doing or who's supposed to be directing or who's supposed to be writing. You know, the only time we move forward when we, when people are like, well, let's follow and on page 23, this is supposed to happen. That's when everyone wants to blow their brains out. It's like, I want something new. And that's why things like streaming and like episodic television did grow probably in response to formulaic feature writing. It's probably one of the reasons because people were like, God, can I watch something else that doesn't feel like everything else? And it's because of formula and because people were following what they were supposed to be doing. And it's like, <laughs> not good. I'm a huge advocate of outlines before starting writing. And I know um, uh, it's, it's probably 50, 60, 70% of the work you do because it makes the load a lot easier and you can write a faster screenplay if you have a, an outline. Now that doesn't say there's room, there's no room for changes or improvising, but if you don't have a, a solid roadmap going in, it's almost like a pre-draft of a first draft. And I'm not an advocate. I know there's people say that uh, about the vomit draft where just spill it out. But I don't have the luxury of spilling it out on, on my assignment jobs. I don't. I really have to turn in, um, let's say, out of a 10 scale, I've got to turn in probably an eight. An eight, you know, out of 10 because I'm now holding up development, you know, and I've also done rewrites on other screenwriters' work projects that have that were page one rewrites, which means that the script that they have went through multiple drafts and still is not there. And they have a buyer, they have a network who's waiting on the script. And so um, I've also been hired to do a rewrite job where I can come in, but it's like a page one rewrite where see the script that you have, you can't use any of it. The names, yes, the concept, yes, but you basically, and that's, that's something that I've learned how to do uh, which is good because there is a lot of rewrite work out there and and some writers uh, look down on it upon oh you know but uh, but an example is that I took a rewrite job and that ended up being three more jobs with the same company because that opened the door for them and then they were thankful for that so you never know um, what opportunity is is gonna you know you're gonna either turn down or accept uh, so but back to your point about the outline, I, I think it's extremely important to, to do an outline before your screenplay because it's easier to work out the problems there than it is writing a complete first draft and having just have so many problems. And also it trains you, like I said, it's a, like you're an Olympic athlete, it trains you for the time when you do have to do outlines because I, I'm not allowed to write 
these assignments without an outline that I have to create. So they won't just let me go to pages. I mean, they have other people involved who have to okay it. So the outline is extremely important. There's a lot of people that get discouraged today uh, because they do feel like they're doing something wrong. And there is that element out there on the message boards, on podcasts, very popular podcasts that talk about black and white, define things in black and white. And it's dangerous. It's just like, it's like, you know, people have tried to figure out where this industry is going and where storytelling is going in our culture all the time since I've been working to write screenplays or whatever. And I've seen all the different iterations of like, well, you're not able to write. You shouldn't write anything, period. You shouldn't write anything about the industry. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And all of it's been blown up. It was, you shouldn't write anything. I mean, you know, like an online bookseller an online bookstore wins like Oscars now. You know, it's like, it, 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 like no, don't tell me what anything black and white is anymore. So it's dangerous. And so we, we can talk about like the rules of why people care about movies and like the, the sort of the laws of emotion. And, 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 and I think no one's gonna really get freaked out. I think that's sort of organic stuff. But when I started off, I read Michael Haig's book and, um, but his book, and you know, I don't even remember, he, I don't think he talked a lot about formulas or beat sheets, he might've talked about, it. the only thing I remember him talk, I, the only thing I remember from Michael's book was encouragement. Like he just empowered, he gave me hope, he gave me, and he definitely encouraged me. And so that's what I always responded to. And I responded, he, he seemed to have a sense of like, that people, it was rare for something good to be written and but he but he did find it possible and there were things that he he was very much it was a hopeful book so i think that's the only thing i got i think that was the only screenwriting book that i ever read a lot from i don't know if i read the whole thing through but i would often refer to it it's not that mysterious i mean there's there's different there's a step outline there's a there's a one sheet which is just a one one sheet of paper which is the concept you know it's sort of a short synopsis there's the log line, which is even smaller, you know, two or three sentences. So there's different steps and, and you, have to have, you have to have each along the way because you have the quick pitch. Mm, I'm not interested. Then you have the quick pitch and they go, hmm, I'm willing to read something, not the script, but I'll read a synopsis. Then, you know, there's different steps of how, how um, interested they are to read f what you want is the final product, the final script is for them to read. Um, but the, the treatment, I mean, there's many different, for, you know, again, like a step outline. I've done outlines um, that were 30 pages. I mean, completely, it, it just you triple it and you have the script. But everything had to be worked out because it was very technical. Um, the way the film was going to be shot was from, from like an iPhone and from different things. And so it really had to be spelled out. You know, there was no, because on the set you just can't, leave it up to chance so that's you know but at that point i could have written the script in, in weeks because it was all figured out you know i figured it out already um, and you want that outline uh for those dark periods when you're stuck you don't want to be stuck trying to figure out plot points when you should be filling pages that's the worst part that's the worst place to be audiences don't care about when what page number a scene is on all the audiences are responding to is emotional veracity. It's they want to be sucked in. They want to feel a part of the universe. People go into it. Have you ever thought about this? People walk into a theater to watch other people on a screen act out stuff from life and they just watch it. Like, why are they watching it? It's the weirdest thing when you go into a play in a theater, people are watching people argue on, a, on an imaginary stage. We're gonna watch people act out life. It, it doesn't make any, it's like bizarre. But the reason why people are doing it is because it gives them meaning for their struggles. They go, I've done that. That's me. I fought cancer. I, you know, my, you know, something happened to me. I won the state championship. I want to be able to win the state championship. I want to be able to come from nowhere. I want to believe. I want to fall in love. I want to survive the loss of a loved one. This can happen. I saw a story about somebody. I mean, 
This is why it gives us context so that we're not walking around going, why am I doing all this? You see the movie and you're like, other people have been dumped. Other people have been fired. Other people have been discriminated against. Other people, there's been injustice. I've suffered injustice. So have they. I can live. I'm going to fight. That's why people go to movies. So that's, that's the only thing anybody cares about. They don't care if, you know, the point of no return happens on page 63 or some crap. All, so if you're writing from that place, so that's not punk rock. That's just, that's just stories. That's storytelling. That's conservative storytelling, liberal, you know, it's not supposed to be political, but I'm just saying and that's anybody. That's any ethos. That is the ethos. So if you're going to get in the business of the woman, you know, the young lady in the front row who's like the person who gives the apple to the teacher, she better get, it's the, it, this, is the, this is the business of emotion. You know, it's the business of dealing, of, of human identification with, with authentic stories. And that's heavy lifting. That requires like sharing of your life experience. It, it is demanding. It's just, just as, you know, a surgeon is, it's emotionally demanding to be a nurse. It's emotionally demanding to, to, to be a trash man because you're like looking at people's trash. You're like, oh my God, they threw out this photo album. I mean, it's like everybody's got to deal with something and they're like, you know, this is the thing. And it's like, this is the business. This is that business. So, so you can, you know, you, you can't get around that. And when people try and get around that, then the great actor becomes the good actor and the great screenplay becomes an okay movie. But when you go there and you sell the whole thing and you don't shy away, then you're Kurosawa, then you're, you know, then you're Eugene O'Neill, then you're writing something, you know, then you're doing 12 Years a Slave, then you're fearless, then you're telling the, you know, you're doing the thing that people go, you know, that's awesome. Black Klansman, just like, you know, amazing, honest movie, you know, about the truth. You know, it's a great movie and it's it's about the truth. And it's like, and it's emotional. It's disturbing. But it's like, but that's but that's where it's that's Shakespeare. You know, that's it's never changed. That's not new. You know, that's not like avant-garde or anything. It's just, that's just how, and audiences are still responding to it because we're human beings and we still are responding to a good story. That usually ends up being 12 or 15 pages as the, as the outline uh, in, in, my, in my experience with my producers. And that outline is then rewritten sometimes two or three times. I mean, I, I have to, you know, I get notes on the outline before I'm allowed to go to the script. So the script is like the final, once we okay the outline, then go to pages. And that's not to say they're, they don't change their mind once the script's finished, because that's, that's the crazy part, because you say, yeah, but you agreed to it in the outline, but we built the house and now we don't kind of like the way it looks, you know, we thought we did. And so that happens too. So you have to be you know, open and prepared for rewrites at all stages, but it, it does allow you to write a faster, first draft is to have a solid outline because for me I have to see the film in my head before I can write it and I know that I, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of problems ahead of me if I can't see it I mean I, I don't I don't lock in like I've almost seen the movie like like when you watch a movie you remember it I have to see it that way and I know things are working when I start to live and you know the outline's good for living with your characters you know you get to live with them you get to you get to see how the movie is working or it doesn't work before you sit down and write that screenplay, which is building the house. You know, that's almost like the pre-blueprint. And in my opinion, that's been my experience. But I know a lot of writers just want to write down a couple of lines and, and wing it. And there's so many, so many things that can go wrong. And why, why not turn in your, the most amazing first draft you can? I don't see the, the problem with that. Uh, and in fact, like I say, you have to when you're doing assignment work. You want fewer drafts. You don't want eight drafts because nothing's working. You know, you want to turn that where they go, wow, one of my assignments, I did two drafts and two polishes, we're done. That's what they like. They don't like five, you're not getting it, that's where you get fired and they hire somebody else who can facilitate the notes and get it moving. You know, it's, it's, a, it's creative, but it's also a business at the same time, unfortunately.